Hello, I'm Steve Lorello. I am the .NET Developer Advocate here at Redis. And I'm going to talk to you today about Redis Stack and using Redis Stack with ASP.NET Core. So before we get started, let me just go over what we're going to be covering today. First up, we're going to be covering how to set up Redis Stack in your development environment. I'm a Windows developer, so I'm going to be setting, up, setting this up in Windows. Next, we'll talk about how to connect to Redis Stack from an ASP.NET Core application. And in fact, the application we're going to be building, which is a simple web API for modeling a person data, uh, person data structure, is to allow you to sort of get Redis Stack integrated with your app and get up and running with it. Then we're going to be modeling our document data with Redis Stack and a library that's sort of purpose-built for Redis Stack called Redis Elm. And then we'll be learning how to query documents from Redis Stack with Redis Elm. And then finally, we'll be learning how to use Redis Insights, which is a graphical user interface with Redis Stack. Before we move on, uh, before we really get into things though, I just want to point out to you that in GitHub, in the uh, Redis developer organization, we have the Redis Ohm.net skeleton app, which is the application that we're going to be building. This is just meant as sort of a skeleton app to show you how to integrate Redis stack with your application. Um, it's broken into four checkpoints, a starting point, and then checkpoints one, two, and three, which will I'll basically tell you when we get there, um, but there are different steps along the journey to get to the end state, which is a simple web API for querying people in Redis. So with that said, let's get started. Um, the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to spin up the Docker image containing Redis stack. To do that, all we need to do is, I'm doing this in WSL, let's do a Docker run. I'm gonna write it detached and I'm gonna to need to expose two ports, 6379 and 8001. And the name of the image is Redis Lab slash Redis Stack. And with that done, I can connect to the Redis CLI like I would any other instance of Redis. And I can do um, basically the Redis, the Redis commands. I can do set foo bar. I can do s add fruit, apple, tangerine, melon. Do s members just like I would with any other Redis instance. And with that Docker image running, I can actually go to my local host 8001. And this brings me to the Redis Insight GUI. You basically accept the EULA. And then it brings you to this page where you can, you know, connect to your Redis database. So uh, if I just click add Redis database, it brings me to this little screen here. Uh, I can use the local host, which is the instance that I'm running, 63979. And I need to provide it just a database alias. So uh, my local Redis that will suffice. And here now, that's actually added this Redis database. What it means is it's connected to uh, this Redis database. And if I click in here now, you'll see that uh, basically the keys that I've inserted into Redis show up on this side panel here, and I can click into them and I can interact with them. So for example, I have melon, tangerine, and apple in here. What if I wanted to add a kiwi, right? And then what if I wanted to remove melon uh, member in here? And I could do all that fairly easily, provide you a nice graphical user interface to interact with your Redis data. Now, there's two other things to, to check out in here. We have the CLI, which is, basically what I was using from the command line before, but I can use it right here in the browser. Um, you could actually add keys, sort of like ad hoc, by just clicking on the add key and selecting the, the basically key type that you wanna add and like entering the key name and whatever the elements or whatever, you, whatever the values that you're inserting into that key are. And then there is the profiler. Now the profiler basically will listen to anything, any of the commands that are coming into Redis. So if I had a string that I want to set and I want to set bar to baz, and basically, basically what that'll do is it'll create a command for me and you'll see 
that it sets Bar to Baz in um in Redis right from basically that's what the that's what the GUI is uh, doing. It's actually sending these commands to Redis and getting it set up. So that is Redis Insight for now. Um, we'll look at it a little bit more later after we've added some other data into uh, Redis. You'll see that if I refresh here, that bar is right here. Um, yeah, with all that done, let's get started with our application. So the first thing I'm gonna do from that end is clone the repository. So if I go to wherever I want to basically copy down this repository, I can just do a git clone, clone it right there. CD in the .net skeleton app. And here, um, I'm gonna start on the starting point. Git checkout starting point. That's gonna switch me to the starting point branch for in, in this Git repository. Now, this basically has nothing in it. So if I just did a start and open this up, you'll see that um, there's basically nothing in here. There's just this data directory, which has the people that we're going to be inserting into Redis. Um, there's a readme and that's it, that's all we got. Now, with all that done, um, the first thing we're gonna need to do is actually create our app. So to create our app, we're gonna just use a .NET new command. So .NET new, uh, this is going to be a web API app. Uh, we're gonna output it here. We're gonna call it redis.ohm.skeleton. We'll pass in a no HTTPS flag, and we will set the Kestrel HTTP port to 5,000. And that creates our, basically our CS project here. With that done, uh, I just wanna add the Redis Ohm package to it. So to do that, I just do a .NET add package, redis.ohm, and that will add my Redis Ohm package to this repository or to this application. I'll open this and then open Redis Ohm skeleton in Rider. And when that finishes loading, and you can use whatever ID you want for this. I just prefer using Rider. Um, when that finishes loading, I'm gonna just delete the weather forecast and weather forecast controller classes from here because they're not needed. Um, and then the first thing to do in the app is actually to configure it. So we just wanna add one configuration parameter in here in our app settings.json file, and that's the Redis connection string. And this is going to be uh, a Redis URI. So a Redis URI is uses the Redis scheme. And then after the two forward slashes, you can basically add your username, colon password, at, and then your host name, which is localhost, colon 6379. Now, I don't have a username nor a password enabled here, so I can just delete all of that. But if you had it, that, that would be where you would put it. Um, so yeah, Redis colon forward slash forward slash localhost colon 6379 is my connection string, and I can go into my program file. And now in here, I just need to add the Redis connection provider from Redis Ohm, which is what we're gonna be using to talk to Redis. So builder.services.addsingleton um, and builder.configuration sub Redis connection string. Well, dependency inject an instance of a Redis connection provider if I actually knew what my Redis connection provider. Yeah, with that service injected into Redis now, we're sort of ready to inject it into our controller. So I'll just do an add here and I'm gonna create a people controller. And this is just gonna be a basic basic web API controller. 
So I'll mark it as an API controller and I'll give it a route, which will be controller, meaning that the actual controller name is going to be what the path is that you're using. And then I just need to add a private read-only um, Redis connection provider, provider, and I need to inject it in the constructor public uh, people controller, uh, passing in the Redis connection provider, provider, and I can just set the provider to that. And that works obviously because this has been dependency injected into the container and it just pops into here when it's ready to go. And with that, that actually brings us to the end of um, starting point to checkpoint one. So we are now at checkpoint one. So if you haven't been following along at this point, you can just check out checkpoint one with a git checkout checkpoint one. So all you would need to do, and you would be where we are now. So moving right along, the next thing we're the next this whole checkpoint is just going to be devoted to building out our person model. And our person model is going to have two um, classes associated with it. So I'll create a directory model, and it's going to have two classes associated with it. It's going to have a person, and it's going to have an address. Now, the address class is just going to be an embedded document inside of our person class. So I don't need to do anything special to the declaration of address because it's just going to be the data in it that it's using um, for basically creating our model in Redis. But we will we'll need a, a special declaration on top of person when it's time to go. But we're going to add some properties here. So let's property string uh, street number will uh, actually this will be an integer street name which will be a string um unit we'll do let's say city state postal code and uh, country and we'll have a special um, geolock which will be the location so these are pretty straightforward components of an address um, and we're going to want to be able to search for any one of them so to, in order to search for any one of them, in order to filter any, any one of them, we have to explicitly tell Redis ahead of time that um, that particular field needs to be indexed. To do that, luckily all I need to do is say that, is decorate the field with the index attribute. And that will index that field. Um, as a matter of fact, all of these, with the exception of street name, are going to be quote unquote indexed. And Redis Ohm will decide how to actually index all of them in Redis for you uh, without you having to think about anything other than mark it as indexed. The only one that we're not declaring as indexed is street name, and we're going to declare that as searchable. And the reason we're declaring it as searchable is because street name. Um, might be something that we want to do a full text search on rather than uh, an exact match search on. So we'll mark the street name as searchable and then the rest of these as indexed. So Redis Ohm and Redis Stack have a module uh, that they are associated with called Redis Search. Redis Search basically has four types of indexes. It has numeric, tag, text, and geo. And the index attribute is smart enough to decide which index type to use. So for strings, it'll use tags. For integers or any other numerics, it will use a numeric. And for location data, it will use a geolock. And so for location data in a geolock structure, it'll use um, the geotype. So you don't really have to think about what you're indexing here or how you're indexing things 
you just have to decide that you want to index them and you just declare it on the class that that's what you want to do. And with all that done, we're actually done with um, basically building out our address model and we're just going to move on to our person model. So in our person model, we want to actually store a person in Redis. Like we don't want to necessarily, we don't want to store an address in Redis. We want to store an address as a component of a person. So basically because we're storing the person in Redis, we need to declare the person as a document. In that document now, um, we can pass in different things to decide things about the index name. We can decide things about uh, the prefixes that it uses. We can decide storage type. So we're only going to set two things in this document attribute. We're going to set the storage type of JSON. And the reason we're using JSON as opposed to hashes is because JSON provides more rich features for actually searching for data in Redis. And we're going to use um, the prefixes attribute in here. And we'll set prefixes to a new string array um, just containing person. And the prefix is going to determine what the how the key is built. So whatever the first prefix in this array is, is the um, the prefix for the key you're going to use. And if you don't provide a prefix, that's fine, but it's going to use the fully qualified class name. So it'll be the whole namespace with the class name, um, basically, that you're using for your prefixes. Now, inside of person, I'm going to add a few attributes, uh, a few fields. Uh, the first I'm going to add is an ID. So prop string ID. And because this is the ID, I'm going to declare this as a Redis ID field. And I'll declare this as index as well. Um, next, I'm going to add a first name and a last name. I will declare both of these next as well. And these are just like, um, just like the country or city in the previous example and address. These will be exact um, text matches. I'll add an age, so I'll index um, an age. So this is gonna be the person's age. Um, Next, we'll declare a, uh, we'll have a personal statement for every person. And we'll declare this as searchable because maybe you want to search for this instead of, um, you want to do full text search on a personal statements rather than just doing exact text searches because this could be a little, more, a little bit more open-ended. I will also, Let me open my cheat code over here. I think I just need the address still. Oh, no, I need two more things. I want to declare a, an array of strings called skills, which I will declare as index as well. And this array, the Redis OM and Redis are smart enough that you can call contains on a, an array of strings, and you will match only things that contain that string. So all I need to do is declare that Ray as indexed and that and Redis will take care of the rest for me. And finally, I want to declare an address. And I also want to make sure that I'm setting all the strings to normal in case my model doesn't contain them. Um, I have an address and I can declare this as index as well. But the trick is with, with address, because this is a complex type, um, if I just declare it as indexed, it's not actually gonna index anything. And the reason for that is because we don't want to recursively march down very long object graphs to build out our indexes. We want you to be a little bit more explicit with what you want for declaring your uh, indices on different types. And there's two ways you can index 
uh, more complex types. The two ways are basically you can either build um, build out individual uh, paths within the object graph that you want to use, or you can just index everything underneath um, the object to a certain depth. So the first way for an indexed or a searchable attribute, you would basically say um, that you have a JSON path that you want to navigate to. And you just basically put the JSON path from the address root. So dot city would index the city within address. Dot country would index the country within address. If I want to set the a searchable city, I can do that as well. Um, and basically, yeah, from there you can just, you know, declare explicitly the objects in the object graph that you want to index. So you don't have to sort of blow up your index by indexing everything underneath address. And this becomes really important if basically we said we had a indexed address in here. If we had this indexed address in here, well, like, if we were going to index everything underneath address, well, that's just going to recursively keep going and keep building out the, the object graph. And the countermeasure we have for that is you can declare uh, that you want to index something as it appears to a certain cascade depth. So if I set the cascade depth to one, it will just go one level into address and index all of the things in address for me. Um, except for anything that basically has another layer of complexity to it. If I set the cascade depth to two, it would actually index address for me as the, the forwarding address within address for me as well. So it's more aggressive with going down the object graph. And it'll just go down to the depth that you tell it. It'll respect whatever's up here. But for our purposes here, we'll just set that to one. And I'll just delete this forwarding address out of the address class. So that actually builds out our entire model for us. And the only thing we're, we're left to do is to create the index in Redis. So to do that, we will create a new folder. And I'm going to use a hosted service to do this. A hosted service is basically something you could run at the outset and at the end of your application's lifecycle. Um, and I will create the index creation service. And in here, I need to basically implement I hosted service, which has two methods in it, start and stop, async. The stop, I'm not going to do anything. Um, task not completed task. Uh, but the start, I will actually declare as async. Um, and we'll pick up on that a little bit. But I need to inject my Redis connection provider in here again. So again, I'll have a private read-only Redis connection provider, and I'll have a public index creation service that takes your Redis connection provider, and I'll set the provider to route. So now in start async, I need to determine whether my person um, index exists. And to do that, I can say var exists, and set exists equals to provider dot execute or provider dot connection connection is basically the raw connection to redis dot execute async and i'll pass in the command ft dot list now if i await this well let's say that this is the list of index indexes Yeah, we'll just leave the spelling here. It's fine. And this is actually going to be an array. This is going to come back as an array. So I'll just say to array. And then I'll check to see. Oh, now I know why it was misspelled. There's no N. There we go. List of indexes. 
And in this list of indexes, I'm going to see if, if not, um, list of indexes dot any x equals person id x. It probably has it. At, yeah, Ryder has an opinion about how that should look. But basically, I'm making sure that all all the indexes that are in Redis don't match this person index. And if they don't, I can call await divider dot connection dot read index async type of person, which is my model from before, and. With all that done, um, that's all I need to do to actually create the index in Redis is just call this provider.connection.createAsync, and I'm good to go. So with all that done, the last thing we actually need to do is we need to dependency inject this service into our ASP.NET app, right? So we have to go to program.cs, and here I need to say add hosted service, and just say that this is going to be a index creation service. And that's going to create the index for me when um, Redis loads. And that brings us to the end of checkpoint two, two. So we can now, if you haven't been following along, you can just do a git checkout checkpoint two. Um, and you can just pick up with us for where we are now. So the last thing we actually need to do is we need to go back into our people controller. And we need to actually start you building our API out for our people. So a private read only I Redis collection of the type person. We'll call this people. Now this collection here is sort of like the easiest way to interact with our model in Redis. So we can do ads, updates, deletes, we can just create new people and query them using Fluent API. It makes makes life a little bit easier, a lot easier when you're working with data in Redis. And to actually create this people collection, I will just say provider dot Redis collection person. And that's it. That's all I got to do. Now, um, a lot of this API I'm just going to copy paste, so it's easier to sort of get to. So I'm going to uh, just go to my my cheat code over here, and I'll just go one method at a time. So the first method is going to be the create person method, right? So we're going to add a person to uh, Redis. So this is going to be HTTP post request. It's going to be um, async, and it's going to return a person. And it's going to pull out from the body a person person. And all I need to do to insert it into Redis is just await uh, people.insertAsync person, and then just return the person. Now. Um, in, in our case here with the data that I, I assembled for this, the people don't have, um, IDs yet. They are, they're just shipped off without an ID to our API and our API will create the ID for them, uh, set them in Redis and reply back. So what this insert async actually does is it takes the person class that identifies the ID, it creates an ID for it, sets the ID, and then um, in the person class now, at the end of this, your person has now populated with an ID. So that makes life a little bit easier when you're inserting things. Um, but that's all you gotta do to add a person. Just call insert async, passing in the person. Next, uh, let's look at filtering with a numeric. Uh, remember our people have ages. So we'll have an HTTP get called filter a, uh, filter age. And so we'll be filtering by age and we'll go from a minimum age to a maximum age, both of which are passed into the query. And in here, all I need to do to assemble all the people I have stored in Redis with ages between that min age and max age is to do a simple, um, link query with x dot age greater than or equal to min age and x dot age less than or equal to max age. Um, send that all to a list and return it. That's simple. Uh, another really neat feature you can do with this is you can do a geo filter. So I'm going to create another method filter geo or filter by geo. 
And in here, I'm going to pass in a particular point on a map, uh, longitude and latitude. Those are both going to be passed into the query. And then I'm going to also pass in a radius and a unit to use, like miles, kilometers, meters, or feet, I believe are the four that we support. Um, and I'm going to use those in the people's geofilter method, passing in the address's location. Remember, the address has a geolock object, which we can use as our location. Uh, longitude, a latitude, the radius, uh, the circle around that you want to draw, and the unit parsed to the geolock distance unit. And yeah, with all of that, it's just going to drop a point on a map, draw a circle around it, and any people that are in that side of that circle, it's going to res uh, respond with. Uh, next, let's do the classic, we'll do a filter by age, so or filter by name, rather. So filter by uh, first name and last name. So we will get a first and last name on our API, and we will find people with that first and last name. So to do that, you just do simple people dot where um, that person dot first name is equal to first name and person dot last name is equal to last name, and then return that as a list. It's very simple, pretty straightforward. The first name and last name are both indexed, so they both um, they both dry, are driven off of exact matches, which makes this relatively a relatively straightforward operation from a link perspective. Um, next we'll do a full text search on the personal statement of the individual. So in this case, we're gonna call this filter by personal statement, and we'll pass in text from a personal statement that we would wanna use in this. And basically all this does is, essentially it, it says equals here. So we're do, doing double equals, but what that really means is match that text to the personal statement. And if it matches, it'll respond uh, back with an affirmative and it'll respond with all the matching uh, people. Uh, next, filter by postal code. This is just like um, filtering by name in that it's exact text match on a string. And we're basically filtering down to the postal code. And yeah. The thing is, though, is that because this is on the address, right, if we hadn't explicitly declared the address as something we want to cascade into, and we tried running this, it would run the query in in Redis, but the Redis would respond with um, basically an error saying that postal code is an index, and it can't find that in the index. Uh, and that's valid because we haven't declared that we wanted this index, but because we declared a cascade depth on address, uh, we are able to essentially index into address and into the postal code of the address and just match it like so. Um, let's see, street name, uh, we could also do. This is very similar to the personal statement before because the street name on the address is a, exact, is a text match, a um, full text searchable field. This is gonna do a match on that street name rather than an exact match, a full text match that is. And same deal, it's under the address, it's under the auspices of address, so yeah. The final query that we're gonna look at is filtered by skill. Skills are um, an array of strings that are attached to our people object. And basically, I can call contains on that, that array and pass in the skill that I want to see if it contains. And if I do that, Redis Ohm is smart enough to say, all right, well, this is an array of strings. Let's see if skill is inside that, that JSON array in Redis. And yeah, so if you want to match against an array, that's all you got to do is call x.skills.contains and pass in the skill and reply back with a list. The next couple are, so we've done, we've done the C and the R of CRUD, right? Create and read. Um, let's get to, the, let's do the O real quick. So 
um, the O we'll do with an HTTP patch. And I'll just show you how to update one field. So update age, and, and I, I'm gonna pass in an ID. Now, public, I actually, or I action reserve, let's do public async task, my action result. And then from the route, I'll pull out the ID. And then from the body, I'll pull out a new int, new age. Oh, probably would help if I gave it uh, the method name update age. There we go. And in here, there's a couple of ways I can I can update things in Redis. So like, the one way is I can just simply do a get. Um, let's see, I can do people that bind by ID and pass in the ID. Yeah, we'll do use async method, and then I can set the person that age to the new age. And then I can just do a people that update a person awaiting that because that returns the task. And if I do that, it'll just update that one person. Another thing you can do is you do a, a for each bar person and people that where you match the attribute to so x.id equals id, and you change the person's age to the new age. And you go through all the people that have that match ID. In this case, it's only one because the ID is unique uh, upon insertion. And you would just call save on the people collection. And it'll go through all of the documents that you've seen so far and um, line them up and then create updates for all of them. And then regardless, I'm going to return and accept it. Both of those methods work. Uh, finally, we're going to delete. And deleting is pretty straightforward. I'll just make this an HTTP delete. I'll do it from route string ID. And I can. I can either call delete on a particular person. So if I did uh, our person equals await uh, people that find by ID async, passing in the ID, I could just oh, test speed async task. I can just call people.delete that person. Or it's actually easier in this case to just call uh, people that unlink or that people that unlink um, provider dot connection dot unlink and pass in the uh, properly formatted key name, which would be person colon ID in this case, and then just return with uh, return that no content back to indicate that it was successful. Either of those methods work. In this case. It's just easier to call the unlink because then you don't have to go get the you don't have to go get the person first. So yeah, um, that's everything that goes into building our little API here. The only thing left to do is to run it. Call it .net run. This is going to launch now. You'll see I have my little Swagger URL. Um, I'm going to open up PowerShell, and in here. I have in redisome.net skeleton app slash data, I have a little PowerShell script that I can use to insert a bunch of different people into uh, Redis. I have a, a few characters from different universes, Sherlock Holmes and Harry Potter and um, Monica Geller and just a few, few people. And I can go in and I can start filtering things. So I can go and filter by age. So if I want to find all the people between five and 35, I can do that. Just returns one person in this case. Um, I can do my geo filters. 
So I can try this out and find everyone within a hundred miles at this point. And in this case, there should be two people because they're both within um, that sort of LA area. Um, one's in Malibu, Neil, one's in Venice, California. Um, I can filter by name. So if I wanted to find everyone named Sherlock Holmes, I can do that. Um, we can filter by, we can do a full text search and filter by all the archers. And again, we only get one of those. We could filter by postal code. Again, we're only gonna get one street name. Um, let me see, how do I spell the street name? You'll see uh, Privet Drive, we could just put Privet in and it'll match it correctly. Or I could put Privet Drive in, and I'll match that all right too. Um, you can also match by skills. Um, like, so for example, I can find everyone who's skilled at archery. You'll see that archery falls in here. If I could find, if I want to find everyone that's good at boxing, do that as well. Boxing again, we'll pull up that one record and then Sherlock Holmes. So keep wishing but Sherlock Holmes come up. Um, and then if I want to update an age, so say I had one of the people in here have a birthday, I can say, I can change their age by just setting it in here like that. And then if I got that same person again, You'll see that their age has gone from 27 to 28. And then finally, if um, I wanted to delete that person out of my database, I could do that just by passing in the ID into Redisome and it will delete it for me. And you'll see that that person is no longer in here when I go to query it again. So if we're looking for all the boxers, Keep Bishop is no longer in there, just Sherlock Holmes. But yeah. Um, that's basically our API. And that was that was pretty much how you get up and running pretty quickly with Redis Stack and RedisHome.net. If you want to take a look at what the data looks like inside of Redis Insights, we can go to Redis, uh, localhost 8001 again. And you can actually see the JSON keys in here now. Um, you'll see that they basically have these JSON data structures with the ID set up and first name and last name and their personal statement and all their skills and their address and all the like. If I started the profiler again uh, and say I went back into here and reinserted everybody because now that now there's going to be duplicates in here but that it sort of sort of still demonstrates my point and that um, Well, in here, you'll see that I, this JSON sets all come through nicely. And when we're querying things, basically, uh, you know, Redis Insights goes through and does its thing. But yeah, these JSON sets are what comes through here. When we issue a query through Redis Own, you'll see this skill comes in here and you'll see actually the Redis search query come through right here. And yeah, like you can see how basically all of your data is being interacted with in Redis. You can see your data sitting sort of at rest in, in Redis. And yeah, that, that basically includes our workshop into Redis stack. And um, yeah, so thank you for joining us. That is how you integrate Redis stack with RedisHome.net and with ASP.NET Core. So yeah, anyway, thank you very much. Have a good one.